everybody, I'm Little Jimmy Shira and welcoming you to Day Tripping. We have an exciting program for you today because we're going to visit some rich, rich, rich heritage at Sunken Gardens. We're also going to visit the good people at Great Explorations and find out where your grandparents and parents can bring your kids to have a fun time any day of the week. So let's do some day tripping. Come on, follow me. Let's go in. We are now inside beautiful Sunken Gardens, and this young man right here, Bill O'Grady, is going to tell us everything about this uh, a business has been here since the early 1900s, is that correct? Actually, yeah, the garden started in 1903 when George Turner moved here from Jacksonville, and he bought this property. It really surprised the neighbors at the time because there was a swamp here, and they couldn't figure out why somebody would be buying Florida swamp land. But George was pretty bright, and he knew that if he could get the water out of that, uh, that swamp, he'd have access to rich black muck soil. He did determine eventually that it had been a sinkhole that had occurred here thousands of years ago that created that wonderful soil. He started planting tropical fruit trees with the hope of setting his family up in a fruit business, but the reality was people didn't buy the fruit. They just came to look at his collection of plants. 1935, he had it all fenced in, and he opened it as Turner's Sunken Gardens. This building that we're in right now was also very significant in St. Petersburg's history in that it was the original sanitary public market, so basically the first mall in the area, and it opened in 1926, so even the building is historic. But that said, let's go see where the garden started uh, in the Oak Pavilion where the Turners had their homestead. Great. Let's go outside and see the gardens themselves. Bill, what a beautiful section of sunken gardens we're in right here. What is this area called? Well, thank you. This is uh, the Oak Pavilion. We hold a lot of weddings and things here. But this was originally uh, where the Turner family built their home when they moved here in 1903. This is where they constructed their home. We now use it uh, for entertaining. We have lots of different events that are here. We call it the Oak Pavilion because, as you can see, there's a 250-year-old oak that's overhead. It's Quercus virginiana, the southern live oak. We have eight such oaks on the property and we're you know, very pleased to be their custodians. You can hear the birds that are calling our names over there, so let's go look at the birds. I'm ready. Let's go see the birds. I love birds. Uh, Bill, what type, what's the uh, variety of birds you have here at Sunken Garden? So we have a small collection that we have pretty much as a nod to the Turner family that had over 500 different kinds of animals here. Some of the most popular ones are the flamingos that we'll see shortly and also these, the, the laughing kookaburras from Australia. Uh, Sydney and Alice are uh, known for their sound, actually. They have a great call, and I can hopefully get Sydney to call. And if I can get Sydney to call, then Alice will usually join in, join not in always. Then, okay. Sydney? Every Tarzan movie I've ever seen had those birds I know. in them. They did that a lot. And they're you from know. Australia. Right, but the Tarzan movies were filmed in Florida, and so they had um, Australian birds making the sound, and they had all the African scenery. And so a lot of people actually think that we have monkeys in the garden because they hear that sound, and they make the association. They get from the monkeys. But I assure them we don't have any primates in cages here. <laughs> we do have a nice collection of birds, and if you'd like, let's go look at some more of them. Sure, okay. let's go on down this way. I just cannot believe the birds you have here at Sunken Gardens. I thought it was just a garden. Yeah, well, historically, the Turner family did have quite a few birds here, especially the second generation. Uh, they had many of them. These are part of their original flock of flamingos that came here in 1956. They're wonderful sweet birds. They're Chilean flamingos, so they are native to Chile in South America. Uh, people tend to connect Florida and flamingos quite often, which is really a testimony to our travel industry, our tra travel bureaus. Uh, they're actually indigenous to Central America, South America, sometimes in the Caribbean and uh, the rest are in Africa. Uh, their coloration here is very orange, which is typical of the Chileans. The ones you see in the Caribbean that you see at Hialeah and things like that are taller and more thin, and they are that Pepto-Bismol pink. I'm a native Floridian, and I thought flamingos were indigenous to I know, to a lot Florida. of people think that. Well, they see the roseate spoonbills, I think, mm -hmm. and from there, they just kind of make that connection. But, you know, in addition to birds, you can see behind us, we have a pond. We have lots of ponds and waterfalls. Uh, within this pond, you can see that there is some sacred lotus that's over there just coming up, the coming out of dormancy for the mm -hmm. winter. Some angels trumpet up there, and then some of the night-blooming water lilies that are down here. They'll be closing up shortly because night is over, so they'll be closing up, and then the day bloomers will come out. Let's go look at some more things in the garden. Sure, love to. 
This is really one of my favorite plants in the garden. It was previously known as Bocarnia recurvata, now it's known as Nolina recurvata, but its common name is um, the ponytail palm or elephant's foot palm. It's native to the highlands of Mexico, which has very sharp drainage and very, very hot place. So it has the ability to store water down in this part. It's related to the lilies. And a plant this size could go over two years with no water at all, and it would look just like this. It wow. wouldn't be growing. It would just stay like that. But because of that um, really good adaptation for water conservation, I think sure. we'll see a lot more of these in our landscapes in the future. Uh, How th old is this one? This one's been here since 1935. Mm -mm. So it takes a little while for them to get there. But as long as you're patient, uh, just don't over-fertilize it, don't over-water it. I tell people that give it one, one or two good soaks when you first put it in, turn your sprinklers away, don't fertilize it, and just wait 70 years, and you'll have it just like that. <laughs> Very simple. Let's look at some more. Let's go. Bill, what have you found down there? Well, I wanted to show you what the soil looks like at the bottom of a sinkhole. As I said before, this is a sinkhole. So down here, we have this rich black loam soil, unlike Pinellas County's sand and shell. Yeah. So almost anything will grow in this. It's a wonderful. It's uh, more than six feet deep. We've dug down. We know it's more than six feet deep. So it's tremendous muck. And because of that, things grow very well. You can see all the impatience around. Uh, this is nearing the bottom of the sinkhole. And we put this Bismarck palm in. Um, which is native to Madagascar. We put that in about six years ago, and at that time it was this big. It's grown very, very well. This is a very salt tolerant, drought tolerant, has a lot to offer, so we'll be seeing a lot more of those in the landscapes in the next few years. I hope so. It's beautiful. I think so. Bill, what beautiful palm trees you have here at Sunken Gardens. What, are the, what is this variety? Uh, these are royal palms. They're Roystonia regia, the Cuban royals from Cuba. This area is known as the wedding lawn, and certainly thousands of people have been married here through the years. This is one of the reasons. It really defines the garden beautifully. They were planted here by George Turner himself from seed in 1903. They are the oldest and the largest in the county, and we're very pleased to be the custodians of these palms. Looks like Hawaii in there. It's beautiful. I've got a couple more things I want to show you. I'm sure, more let's go look at them. Out. Bill, let's talk about some of the butterflies that uh, congregate here at Sunken Garden. Oh, sure. We have quite a variety of butterflies that come here. Uh, the reason being that we plant a lot of things to attract them. Uh, this is one of the things that we plant. This is Aristolochia. And Aristolochia is sometimes known as the Dutchman's pipe because this is said to look somewhat like a pipe, if you use your imagination. A lot of people think that it might be insectivorous, meaning that it eats insects, mm -hmm. because they see flies going in there. What the flies are really doing is coming back here and getting to the nectary, getting some of the sweet nectar, and then coming back out. And when they do that, they're inadvertently bringing the pollen from this one to the next flower. But this plant is here to attract the swallowtail butterflies, which lay their eggs on here, and then the caterpillars come through and, and eat it. But it's a fair trade, and even when the buds, the buds haven't opened yet, they're still quite intriguing looking. Beautiful. Um, how much of Sunken Gardens have we seen in our little tour today? We've seen maybe 20 or 25 percent. Wow. Uh, it's three and a half acres and a really in-depth garden tour, which I conduct the in-depth garden tours, they last about an hour to an hour and a half uh, easily. And we have group rates that are available for people that uh, have 15 or more people that come in. Any problem with people in wheelchairs? Oh, or? no, not at all. We have a lot of uh, people that come in that are either in wheelchairs or using walkers. It's very user-friendly. It's a yeah. historic garden that's been an attraction since 1935. So people have been coming in for a very, very long time. No problem whatsoever. <laughs> yes, exactly. Beautiful. I have really enjoyed this. Yeah. Well, I hope you'll have a chance to come back. We're open every day of the year except for Christmas and Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't know what your age is, but if you're over 55, then the no. cost is only $6 per person to come in. I'm 39. But, okay, there you go. <laughs> Bring in your ID. Uh, the Sucking Gardens is on 4th Street, just south of 22nd Avenue in St. Pete. Uh, you need to come down here. It's an incredible place. What a wonderful time we've had here at Sucking Gardens today. Thanks to Bill O'Grady and the folks for making it possible to visit with them. If you haven't been to Sucking Gardens, you're missing a lot of fun. Now we're going to get some hands-on experience. We're going over to Great Exploration. So come on, let's go over there. So much neat stuff to do here, great explorations. And by the way, everybody say hi to Molly. Hi, hi Molly. How hi. are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm peachy. Uh, some of the stuff that grandparents can bring their grandkids down here to do is this thing that is right behind me. Yes, What indeed. is this? This is part of the Orange Grove exhibit. And basically, well, this is all the gears, and this shows you how 
you can pick oranges and then how it goes to the juicing system and how it ends up in our supermarkets. And they have another, you can't see it from there, but they have another thing over here that goes up through the ceiling, comes out to an orange tree over there. So much neat stuff to do here. Uh, what things do you have geared that seniors can come in here and play with and have a good time with? Uh, Molly? <laughs> well, what's really good about our museum is that it's all hands-on and interactive so that you can interact with your grandchildren. We do have Grandparents Day on Wednesday where you get a discount. Um, we do have memberships available for grandparents as well. Um, there's the race car where you can come and build your own race car and then race it around the track. That's, that's always a popular one. Um, there's Publix, my first market, where you come and actually go grocery shopping. Um, that's a really nice one to interact with the grandkids on as well. There's a lot of stuff to do here. There's lots of stuff. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to leave you and I'm going to go look around and see what other neat stuff I can find. All right, have a great time. Thank you, Molly. Come on, baby, give it all you got. And next I will play Brahms Lullaby from the Third Movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, this is what you call hands-on right here at Great Explorations in St. Peter's Sunken Gardens. Uh, this is called a pull yourself up. We've got three different versions of this. This one lists 25% of your body weight, another one 50%, and another one 75%. So all you gotta do is grab the rope and pull above the knots. And then if you get up here and you lose your grip, you still don't crash back down to the floor. It's got a safety thing in there. So this is something really neat for kids of all ages here at Great Explorations. I am finally getting to play on a fire truck. Look at this. Great Explorations has fire trucks here for the kiddies to come play in. Uh, there's room for the grandparents to sit back here and look at a TV set down here with the real St. Pete Fire Department on it. This young man next to me is Aaron. He works here. Uh, Aaron, what do you do here at Great Explorations? I'm with the AmeriCorps program. I'm the volunteer specialist and I basically handle all the volunteers that come into the museum and uh, that's something that the seniors could do here too. Sure. What would seniors do if they were to come down here and work with you? We have so much stuff that they can do. They can can work in the exhibit area and actually help maintain the exhibits or they could actually work on the floor with the children or even in the gift shop. Mm. So any you seniors, if you have any spare time, you want something to do, get in touch with Aaron or any of the gang here at Great Explorations and they'll hook you up. I'm going to go find something else to do, okay? Thank you. What a fun time I've had today here. We have just covered so much ground. We were over at Sunken Gardens with Bill and the folks over there for a while. Uh, then the last one here, we've been here at Great Explorations uh, with Molly and everybody, just having a wonderful time. You need to pack up everybody in the car, bring down kids, grandkids, uh, moms, dads, grandparents, anybody can come down here and have a wonderful time. It's on 4th Street, just a little bit south of 22nd Avenue North in St. Pete, uh, but we have Great Explorations and Sunken Gardens right next door to each other. You'll have a wonderful day down here, I promise you. And that's about it for our program for today. Thank you so much for watching. Till we see you again, I'm Little Jimmy saying be good, be careful, and by all means, be back. Bye-bye.